Welcome to Very Fine Inverses. So this is the last step uh, when we're trying to find the inverse. If you guys remember, I showed you how to find step by step how to find the inverse. Well, the last thing we need to make sure we do is verify our inverses. So let's go and talk a little bit, remember, um, about inverses. Now, inverses we like to say is like kind of the undoing of something. And you know, if we take we said it was like switching the domain and the range. Well, it's also, you know, when we're like solving equations, we're using inverse operations. Meaning if I like add one, the inverse operation would be like subtract one. So what I do is I kind of gave an example of let's, let's choose two functions that are inverses of each other. Let's choose the function f of x, which is x plus one. And if I was to find the inverse of that, I would get my new function g of x, which I could label f inverse of x, but I'm just going to use different labels for a reason, is going to be x minus one. So instead of adding one, the inverse would be to subtract one. Now, there's something that's special that happens when I use composition. Now, I showed you guys a couple of videos on how to do the composition of one function. You plug one function into your other function. And when you do composition of two functions, and you, what you notice when you do composition of two functions that are inverses of each other, what happens is something really special. So when I plug in g of x in for my f of x, what I notice is, after I, write, after I get rid of my parentheses, those cancel out and I'm just left with x, really my identity element again. When I take my f of x function and I plug it into my g of x function, again, you'll notice I'm going to get back my identity element, which is going to be x. So there's something that really happens that's special. When you have two functions and you do the composition both ways, take your f, um, f of x, take the f inverse and plug it into your f of x function, and then also take your f of x function and plug it into your f inverse, inverse function. When you get x out of that, so that means everything that you did to one function and your inverse function undoes everything, so you're just left back with your exact same element again, you have inverses. And you've just proved that two functions are inverses of each other. So what we're going to do is I picked uh, two sets of functions that um, I'd like to go and see if we can determine, verify that they are functions of each other or not. Um, because, you know, for us not to verify, what we'd have to do is, you know, solve, you know, solve this for, just by solving this for its inverse doesn't always guarantee that we found the inverse. We need to make sure we do our composition. So let's do the composition of our uh, first function, which is f of x equals x cubed divided by 8. And then we said the f inverse of x is going to be the cube root of 8 times x. So let's go and do the composition. First one I'll do is take f inverse of x. And see what we get. So I'm going to take my f inverse of x and plug it into my f of x function. So I'll have the cube root of 8x cubed divided by 8. Well, now what we need to do is use our, math, our algebra to simplify this. The cube root is something cubed, cancel out. So then I'm left with 8x divided by 8. Those are going to cancel out, and I'm left with x. So it's good on that front. Now let's do f inverse of x, f inverse of f of x. So therefore, I'm going to take my f of x and plug it into this function. So I have the cube root of 8 times x cubed over 8. Well, to do my mathematics, I notice I remember I have to make sure I multiply under my radical first. So those are going to cancel out. So then I'm left with the cube root of x cubed. Well, the cube root of x cubed, those cancel out, and again, I'm just left with x. Very good. So now let's go and take a look at f of x equals 7x plus 1, and f inverse of x equals x plus 5. So to solve this problem, again, I'm just going to use my uh, composition of my two functions. So I'm going to take my f inverse and plug it in. So f of f inverse of x, that's a big one equals, I'm going to take this, so I'll say uh, 7 times x plus 5 plus 1. So what I did was I took my f inverse function and I plugged it in for my x. Now I use the distributive property, so that's going to give me 7x plus 35 plus 1. And obviously you guys can see that this gives me, you know, 7x plus 36, which obviously does not give me back my identity element. So therefore, these are not inverses of each other. We can go back the other way, but we've already proved they're not inverses, so our job is pretty much done. We just want to verify if they're inverses or not. 
So that's really all you guys need to do is you just need to plug one function into the other function or you, you plug your inverse into your function and then take your function and plug it into your inverse. If you can verify and get your identity element x back out, then you found inverse. So what I'm going to do now is give you guys two problems. And on those two problems, I'd like you to go ahead and write them down, try them on your own, and what I'll do is I'll come back and see how you did. Okay, great. Now what I'd like you guys to do is write down these problems and then I'll spend some time working on them and what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll show you the answers. Okay, here we go. So the first problem, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my inverse function and I'm going to plug it in for my x in my regular function. So I'll have f of f inverse of x is going to equal 3 minus 4. Instead of multiplying by x, I'm going to multiply by my inverse function, which is 3 minus x divided by 4. So now I need to simplify this. Well, 4 divided by 4 multiplied by 4, those are going to cancel out. And I'll be left with 3, 3 minus 3 minus x. Make sure I do my distributive property of my negative 1, and I'm left with 3 minus 3 plus x. Well, those cancel out, and guess what, ladies and gentlemen? I'm left with my x. Now let's check it the other way to make sure it still works. So I'm going to do my f inverse of f of x. So now I'm going to plug f of x this function in for my f inverse of x. So I'll say 3 minus parentheses 3 minus 4x all over 4. So now I can do my distributive property of my negative 1 and I'll have 3 minus 3 plus 4x divided by 4. Well 3 minus 3 obviously is 0 so I'm left with 4x divided by 4 those cancel out, again, leaving me with an x. So therefore, since when I did my composition both ways, I both ended up with x, my identity element, I now have um, inverses. So here, I have two other functions. I have f of x equals the square root of x minus 4, and then I have f inverse of x equals x squared plus 4, where x is greater than or equal to 0. Now remember, we talked about this with inverses, we can't have the inverse of a parabola. Remember, this is a condition. This isn't a parabola. This is only partially a parabola. It's only the, only the parts where x is greater than or equal to 0. So now, to do my function, or to do my inverses, I'm going to take f of f inverse of x. 
So I'm going to take my f inverse of x and plug it in for f of x. So I take the square root of x squared plus 4 minus 4. Well, 4 minus 4 is 0. And then if you take the square root of x squared, it's going to leave you x. Next one, if I do f inverse of f of x. So therefore, now I have the square root of x minus 4 squared plus 4. Well, the square root of x, the, <laughs> the square root of x minus 4 squared is just going to be x minus 4 plus 4. Well, minus 4 plus 4 is going to cancel out, therefore just leaving me with an x. So therefore, on both of these functions, ladies and gentlemen, what you did was you found the, um, you proved that they're inverses. So make sure on your last step when you verify, just use the composition. It's like what you've done before, but you just need to make sure that, remember, inverses is undoing. You know, if you add one, you subtract one. Those are inverse operations. Well, your inverse operations are going to get you back to your identity element x. So there you go, guys. That's how you verify inverses.